If you're battling to control your sugar levels, your insulin system is broken. Now, the assumption is the only way to fix the sugar problem is to fix the insulin problem. And there are a range of tactics that can do this. And the most appropriate tactic will depend on what exactly is broken. The simplest approach and my go-to strategy involves sending in less sugar. So the need for insulin is minimized. The added advantage of this approach is insulin levels are curtailed. And this is most healthful because many of the complications associated with diabetes are driven by high insulin levels. High sugar levels are not the only problem. Type 2 diabetes is a two-headed monster. The second is to send in truckloads of insulin. Now, sometimes the insulin is sent in directly, but usually the approach is to whip the beta cells into a frenzy so there is enough insulin circulating to bully insulin resistant cells into compliance. It works very well in the short term. And then there are a few things in between. The point is, the focus is always on insulin. Because up until now, we've assumed insulin is the only hormone responsible for sugar deliveries. But this is biology, and Mother Nature uses redundancy as a design principle. She frequently has a plan B, sometimes even a plan C and a plan D, because Redundancy is vital in life and death situations. Now, it's fun to play these out, and it's what we often do at Better Body Chemistry. For example, you can exercise like crazy and get the blood flowing, creating sheer stress and lots of good biology, that is increased nitric oxide. Or you can sit in the sauna and cook. As you cook, you get the blood flowing, creating sheer stress and lots of good biology, that is increased nitric oxide. Or you could feed the bacteria living in your mouth some spinach salad. The little critters will turn that nitrate into nitric oxide, once more creating some good biology. Of course, exercising is better it's not always practical. This redundancy principle means there's often more than one solution to a problem, and sometimes our behaviors can leverage that biology. Which brings me to today's story. There is a new lever for sugar control. A team of researchers based at Stanford University have recently discovered a completely independent sugar delivery system. Yep, insulin is redundant. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we meet the new kid on the block. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. The star of this system is Isthmin 1. It's not a new chemical per se. It was first discovered in a frog's brain in 2003. Now, the part of the brain that it came from was the isthmus, which is how it got its name. It's not a protein too many people have paid much attention to, and the lack of interest has not been because it's a frog protein. We humans have it in a variety of cell types, both as adults and as embryos. In fact, the protein was seen as being important in development until it came onto the radar of our Stanford team. The team set about figuring out what it was doing in mice using some genetic jiggery pokery. They created a mouse that was not able to express the protein normally and one that produced a little more than normal. 
and the results were interesting. They figured out that it was an adipokine. That is, it was being actively secreted by your fat cells or adipocytes. And to their surprise, they found it was able to stimulate sugar uptake in adipocytes and muscle cells without insulin. Plus, it had no effect on sugar uptake by liver cells. And then to make things a little bit more interesting, they found that without ismin, insulin was not able to trigger adipocyte sugar uptake. And this is a big deal because it just so happens that although fat cells don't actually use sugar as their fuel source, they're lactate burners, but sugar deliveries get fat cells in the mood. And when they're in the mood, they send a signal to the liver to temporarily shut up shop and stop making sugar. We already know that asprosin is behind this messaging. Fat cells that respond to insulin appropriately stop producing asprosin. And this signals the liver to stop producing sugar. But when you're insulin resistant, this doesn't happen. Asprosin continues to be dispatched, causing sugar problems with a capital T. You can watch this video to learn a little bit more about asprosin. Now, it's the non-stop liver glucogenesis which creates all the difficulties, giving insulin gray hairs. Since isthmin is able to facilitate sugar uptake by fat cells, it's part of the system that stops hepatic gluconeogenesis. But isthmin doesn't just signal to the liver via fat cells. The liver responds to ismin directly, and the response is very different to how it responds to insulin, not just in terms of sugar production. When both sugar and insulin are around, and sugar levels are freakishly high, the liver tries to help out by turning some of the sugars into fat. The process is called de novo lipogenesis, and it does help insulin. But it's a case of no good deed goes unpunished. The liver often ends up being engorged with fat. His anguish is felt far and wide, priming the pancreas to pump out more insulin. This video will explain more. It's like a runaway fire. Your problem is not just your sugar levels are a lot higher than ideal, so are your insulin levels, and you're storing fat everywhere, in the belly, in your liver, and in the nooks and crannies it's not supposed to be. But with Isman around, the liver is a nervous wreck. It switches up what it does. Instead of making fat with the excess sugar, it ups protein synthesis. That makes Isman potentially a much better solution to sugar problems than insulin, because more Isman will serve to put sugars away without creating a fat problem. The team are excited. So am I. And they're thinking blockbuster drug. I'm thinking maybe this is a tool that can be leveraged through lifestyle. I hope so. Isman is definitely on my radar. But since pretty much nothing is really known about Isman, it will be a while before we are able to harness the possibilities. But it is a story of possibilities. Mother Nature has an alternative system to make sugar deliveries. And the system seems to work to put sugars away independently of insulin. And preliminary data suggests even if you're insulin resistant, this system still works. Hmm, this is a frog 
you want to kiss. Ready to begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library. And while you're there, take a moment to join the Body Chemistry Playground. It's a community of people for whom health is their hobby. In the community, you can meet like-minded people, get your questions answered, and get the help and support you need to stay on track by joining the accountability thread. The advice we share at Better Body Chemistry is simple to follow and always based on real science, not hype. Or someone who's feeling a little demoralized by the state of their insulin system, cheer them up by sharing this video. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.